Good afternoon, East Texas. I'm Sarah Legray with KGK and Fox 51 News. We're glad to have you with us. Now, in just a couple of moments, Governor Abbott is holding a briefing coming to you live from Austin with more information on this historic statewide storm. Let's take a listen. Is facing a extremely dangerous winter storm in the coming days. A disaster declaration has already been declared for all 254 counties in Texas. Every part of the state of Texas will face freezing conditions, meaning that includes all the way down to Brownsville, Texas, will face freezing conditions over the coming days. Many of those locations across the state of Texas, the high temperature for a day will be in the single digits. The severity of the cold weather that is about to be experienced here in the coming days is unprecedented in Texas history. And we need people across the state to get ready for this extremely harsh conditions that are coming. The ultra low temperatures will last for several days, meaning that what becomes frozen will remain frozen for a long period of time. Every part of the state will be getting either snow or ice. Some snow accumulations will break records and will make movement virtually impossible. We have all essential agencies in the state of Texas that are actively involved in helping the state respond already. I'm going to run through some of the things that some agencies have done and then others will be described by the other participants in this press conference today. Roads will be one of the biggest challenges that people will be facing. For the Texas Department of Transportation, they have 25 regions in the state of Texas. All 25 regions are already working 24-7 around the clock to address challenges in those regions. All 25 TxDOT regions have winter weather conditions. I want to get out a number that I think may be showing behind me. Uh, two, there, there's a website address you can go to, there's a telephone number you can go to to find out information about roadways across the state. One on, on the internet would be drivetexas.org, that's drivetexas.org, or you can call 1-800-452-9292. Already, there are more than 1,000 roadway segments that have snow or ice on them. And the worst part of the weather storm hasn't even hit the state yet. Over a thousand pieces of TxDOT equipment are being used, more than 1,600 employees, and 745 snow plows are activated. Pre-treatment for roadways began on Tuesday and has continued since then. All 25 Texas Department of Transportation regions have received pre-treatment on multiple roads in each of those regions. The treatment will help, but I cannot emphasize what I am about to say enough. The effectiveness of the treatments will be limited because of the ultra low temperature. The temperature will go so low and remain so low for so long, it will mean that there will be many roads across the entire state that will be extremely dangerous and treacherous to drive on. There will also be roads that get closed uh, because of the snow and ice. Road closures typically will be up to either law enforcement or local officials. So it's so important both with regard to roadways as well as other issues to listen to and to heed uh, local warnings and local directions. Uh, but the, the state will be working with local officials as well as the Texas Department of Public Safety will be engaged in the process of closing down roads uh, that are either impassable or that are too dangerous to drive. One thing uh, that's going to happen, and that is 
there will be people who will venture out and there will be people who will get stranded and we want you to know that uh, if you do get stranded uh, you need to make a call immediately and the place where you find the number is on the back of your driver's license on the back of your driver's license there is a phone number to call for roadside assistance i will tell you the number now is 800-525-5555 Along those lines, the Department of Public Safety Director, Steve McCraw, said, and I quote, there are no experts when it comes to driving on ice. Some people think they will know how to drive on ice, and there have been some people who've driven on ice before and snowed before. But these conditions are so unprecedented in so many regions of the state of Texas, there will be so many other people who have never driven on ice before. And it could be one of the most hazardous things that you can do. Once you lose control of your vehicle on ice, it can lead to exactly what we saw happen in Fort Worth, Texas earlier this week. We as a state and everybody in this state, we should have several collective goals over the next few days, one of which should be that we will not replicate what happened in Fort Worth be involved in these uh, mass accidents or any accident of any kind. This is the kind of thing that every Texan has the capability of themselves being responsible for making sure it does not happen. And that is not getting out on the roads in a way that will cause you and cause others to be involved in traffic accidents. The DPS director also said that all travelers will be very vulnerable. Stranded travelers may be exposed to extreme cold temperatures for long periods of time. Imagine if you're out on the roadway and you run out of gas, or imagine if you're on the roadway and you run into snow and you're incapable of moving. Who knows how long you will be stuck in that position? And the temperature that you will be in may be 10 degrees or less. Your life will be compromised simply because of the harsh weather conditions if you get out and get stuck. There will be people that you can try to call, such as that number that I gave you earlier, such as DPS officers that will be working to help stranded drivers, uh, as well as other agencies. But no one knows how long it may take for them to be able to reach you. And so if you do get stranded, you are putting yourself in a position where your life could be compromised simply because of the ultra low cold temperatures. The Department of Public Safety has already worked on more than a thousand crashes just since this past Thursday that have resulted in more than 10 fatalities. And this, of course, is only expected to get worse if people do not heed the warning to stay off of the roads, to assist roadways as well as to assist public safety in general, the Texas Department of Public Safety has deployed 3,000 troopers that are working 24-7. The National Guard is also working to help in this effort. They are working primarily to assist uh, the Department of Public Safety as well as other state agencies to help things like stranded travelers. Uh, they will also be conducting welfare checks in remote areas across the state. And so let me explain this a little bit. There are so many areas across the state that may not be within cities and may not have easy access to things that people need. There could be areas where people run out of power or people get stranded out uh, in fields, whatever the case may be. The National Guard will be there to try to help, but they may not know exactly where everybody is who is in a difficult situation. Again, if you find yourself in a difficult situation, reach out and call, call local law enforcement, call whatever you need to call, including the number on the back of your driver's license so uh, that people can try to come help you. But just know that the National Guard will be there to assist people in remote areas. Texas Parks and Wildlife will also be assisting. They've de deployed well over 400 uh, vehicles uh, to respond to needs such as accidents or stranded drivers. They also have search and rescue teams, including both aviation and drones, uh, that will be looking for anybody and assisting anybody uh, who may be stranded in any type of situation. And the Texas Forest Service 
has deployed personnel as well as resources across the state, including chainsaw crews, uh, to help clear roads. Among other things, uh, one of the big challenges that we're going to be facing, especially Monday and Tuesday, will be power. Power in the state of Texas will be very stressed, and others will be talking about that here shortly. Demand for power is expected to potentially exceed supply during parts of Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the uh, chair of the a Public Utilities Commission, uh, as, as well as uh, Bill Magnus from ERCOT, will talk more about that shortly. But here's the deal. We do, as a state, have the ability to ensure that we do not run out of power. To do that, however, we need everybody in the state to pitch in and to follow the directions that will be given here shortly about ways that we can uh, reduce power usage on Monday and Tuesday to make sure that there will be no outage whatsoever. We need all Texans to pitch in and to help out ensure that we have plenty of power that will be needed to make sure that we keep our fellow Texans warm. Power companies have crews in place already, as well as having received crews from other states. And this is so important because one thing that we anticipate is with all of the frozen ice on trees and tree limbs and uh, other objects. We do expect a large number of trees and tree limbs falling and compromising power lines. And we need every single power crew that we have already lined up uh, to be fully engaged 24-7 to assist in that process to get power back up and running as quickly as possible. In addition to the state disaster declaration that I've already made. Uh, our team has already spoken with the White House and let them know that uh, as soon as we finish uh, our press conference here today, I am asking for a federal emergency declaration, and that formal request will go in momentarily. Uh, this is going to be a very challenging time for Texas and for Texas, uh, but it is a challenge that we know that our fellow Texans are up to. And if everyone follows the responsible steps that they themselves can control, we are going to get through this challenge uh, in ways that reduce the loss of life, that maximize our ability to access the power that we need, and that also maximizes the safety and security of everybody in this state. With that, I'm going to pass it to the chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management, Nim Kidd. Thank you, Governor. And uh, uh, thank you to all the Texans that are out there that are staying off the roads right now. I, I think the highways are going to be one of the more dangerous places to be right now, not only for people driving, but for our first responders, our tech employees, those out there trying to keep the roads open. Please do your part and stay off of our roads for the next few days, if at all possible, because of the severe weather conditions. Also working with our local cities and counties, there are over 30 warming centers that are open at the local level right now. You can call 211 or 311 in your area for the address to those warming centers. Working with our local partners to make sure that the homeless are taken care of and moved inside. As the governor said, these weather conditions are going to be very stressful right now to the human body with the, with the prolonged cold that we plan on having. And so please make sure that check on your, your neighbors. We've got to take care of people, we've got to take care of pets, and we've got to take care of our pipes. Another thing I want to mention and talk about is carbon monoxide. Every time we have power losses, we lose people to carbon monoxide poisoning. It's a silent killer. Please help us get the message out. Do not burn gas-burning appliances inside your home. If you're going to use some sort of heater outside, make sure that it's away from windows that may be open, drawing that carbon monoxide in. Carbon monoxide is a preventable death. So please, we, we do believe we have about 16,000 customers without power right now. This could go on for a while. Help us get the message out to be very aware of carbon monoxide. That's all I have, Governor. Thank you. And I, I want to double down on one thing that you talked about. In, in addition to avoiding monoxide poisoning, many people that will have their homes or where they're living subject to this ultra-cold weather, may not have been through this before. 
and may not have been through this as long as we will be experiencing this uh, with temperatures below freezing for such a long time. They need to take the caution and steps that are needed to make sure they don't have frozen pipes that will wind up bursting. If you haven't had that happen before, uh, it can flood your entire house as soon as that ice begins to melt. And so there are simple precautionary actions that you can take uh, to make sure uh, that you will not have frozen pipes that wind up bursting that flood your house in the coming days. Uh, next, I want to uh, pass things over to uh, Commissioner Christy Craddock of the Texas Railroad Commission. Thank you, Governor. Obviously, electricity is important, but also gas is, and so the Railroad Commission regulates the gas, and one of the things that we did last night, meaning Friday night at 6.30, was approve an emergency order to temporar temporarily amend um, our Rule 489, which is our uh, rule about who gets priority in gas, uh, and we added uh, electric generation facilities serving human needs customers, we added it to a higher priority. So to ensure our gas supplies, our first two that are, are groups that are important today and continuing always are residences, hospitals, schools, churches, and other human needs customers, and deliveries to local distribution companies, meaning the gas that comes into your house. We want to make sure that that gas stays on, but use it smart. Please don't use it where we have carbon monoxide issues. And the other place that we have elevated, again, is to electric generation facilities, which serve human needs customers. So. We, you know, the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't out right now. So gas and, and coal are very, and nuclear are very important today to make sure those are on and we want to make sure that the gas is flowing in the state. So we appreciate uh, people being thoughtful about their use of gas but, and be safe with gas. If you have an issue, call your local gas company. Make sure you don't light something or do something you're not supposed to. That causes accidents and we want to make sure that, again, carbon monoxide side is a priority. Those, those issues can be remediated pretty easily. Be smart about it, but we want to make sure gas and, and power is flowing in the state. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, and thanks to you and the Railroad Commission for taking that swift action in advance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, and now we have the uh, Chair of the Public Utilities Commission, Deanne Walker. Thank you, Governor Abbott. Uh, as Governor Abbott stated, we are facing extreme demand on the system uh, for Monday and Tuesday. We have been working the past few days trying to address that. We've worked with ERCOT, with the Railroad Commission, and all market participants to be proactive in trying to find solutions. At this point, we really have no additional generation that we can add to the system to address the issues. So therefore, it comes from conservation and demand management, and that's where we need your help. Um, we ask that everyone start conserving energy um, Sunday through Tuesday. I have a few points that uh, seem minor, but they really do make a difference. One is turning your thermostat to 68 or lower, especially if you're not home. Please do that. Uh, close your shades and blinds so that it reduces the amount of heat that leaves your home. Uh, turning off and unplugging non-essential equipment that you're, you have in your home. If you have a toaster uh, plugged in and you don't need it, please uh, unplug that because it still does draw current from uh, if it's just plugged in. And last, if you could avoid using large appliances during especially the peak, which is the morning and evening, if you could not do your laundry or dishwashing and stuff like that, that would be very helpful to us also. The last thing I wanted to add is to a point that Governor Abbott had, and that is down power lines. If you encounter a down power line, please do not uh, try to go up to it or anything. Please call your utility or 311 and let them know there's a down power line. Even if they're on the ground, they can still be hot and still could cause death and injury to you. So please do not uh, go up to any type of down lines, especially with trees around them. Thank you, Governor. Very good. Thank you. And now with ERCOT, we have Bill Magnus. Thank you, Governor. ERCOT's job is primarily 
fundamentally to balance supply and demand on the electric system in Texas. And as uh, Chairman Craddock, Chairman Walker, and the governor have said, uh, the extreme, extraordinary weather conditions we're seeing that will persist for a few days and go to all the Texas are posing a challenge both to the supply and to the demand. Obviously, it's generating demand that rivals almost what we see in the summers. Uh, extraordinary demands on the system for winter in Texas. And on the supply side, it makes gas harder to move around, it freezes wind turbines, uh, makes the generation of power more difficult. And we have good supplies of power in Texas. We have Now we're having some technical difficulties with that press conference, but if you're just joining us, Governor Abbott held a briefing regarding the severe weather we're seeing statewide. Now he touched on a couple of topics, one being he reminded us of the state declaration for all 254 counties across Texas, saying that the highest temperature is going to be in the single digits, warning us about the roads. Now we've talked about this all week. Something we really need to look out for is black ice, and he added that that the worst part of the weather, you know, we haven't even seen it yet. Um, the roads will be uh there, they, there has been some pre-treatment Tuesday, but the effects of these temperatures, um, this treatment is going to be limited because of how freezing it's been. Now, with all that being said, be mindful of how you're driving. Keep a good distance away from the car in front of you. Slow down. You want to be extra cautious or just the best advice that we can give you is just to stay at home to prevent another tragic situation like we saw just last Thursday in Fort Worth. Now, in the case of car malfunctions, he said in the case that you're stranded, DPS officers will be out and about as well as the National Guard, but he did warn that we must be extra cautious these coming days in the case that something like that happens. Also something that we need to anticipate power outages. Now you can try and mitigate the issue yourself by using less power than you normally would on Monday and Tuesday. Now to wrap it all up, he's also asking for a federal emergency declaration. And we of course are going to continue to keep you updated with severe weather alerts both online and throughout our broadcast for the rest of the weekend. And some information you need to know. A few East Texas schools and churches have announced cancellations for tomorrow and Monday due to the weather. Now, as of now, Fellowship Bible Church will cancel its 9 a.m. service for adults and kids ministry and move to its 1030 a.m. service. Now, the churches closed tomorrow are the Word of Life, Green Acres Baptist, and Marvin United Methodist. Now, we also know there are nearly 30 closures and delays, including Longview ISD, Jacksonville ISD, Nacogdoches ISD, Van and Tatum ISD. Now they are all closed on Monday. Expect more over the next few days. And Texas crews have pre-treated East Texas roads with brine to try and avoid a mess in the future. The brine and salt treatment helps prevent ice from sticking to road surfaces. Crews are using it on bridges and overpasses, which would be the first ones to freeze. Now if there's the possibility of ice when you're driving, make sure you leave a safe distance between you and the car in front of you. Now other safety tips for ice roads include drive slowly and if you start to slide ease off the gas pedal or brakes and stay at least 200 feet away from crews treating the roads. The best advice of course is to give yourself plenty of time to arrive at your destination or stay home if you can. All right, let's check in with Marcus Bagwell with a severe weather update. Marcus, how can we best prepare for the freezing temperatures coming our way? Well, Sarah, we have got to be prepared for bitterly cold temperatures. As you heard the governor talk about, that is going to be one of the biggest concerns, but also the precipitation that's coming our way can also be very impactful. And because temperatures will be below freezing for the next several days, it's going to be really hard for that to melt. And I don't have us above freezing until until next Friday afternoon. Once we get to that point, things do begin to warm up, but we've got to get through several days of very cold weather and the bitterly cold really, really settling in Monday through about Wednesday. It looks like so here are the winter storm warnings. This was upgraded this morning. All counties now under that winter storm warning. Some of it has already started, but officially it gets going for the majority of our area into later on this evening and especially into the day tomorrow. Let's check the temperatures. A lot of us have 
been below freezing this afternoon. But how about this? Some of you have seen some peaks of sunshine this afternoon. Road temperatures are in good shape. We have seen some flurries, even some sleep pellets that have passed through. Nothing of big significance for us. That's our Tyler Tower Cam live atop of our studios. Let me show you downtown Nacogdoches where we have seen a couple of peaks of sun also come through here. Still a mostly cloudy sky, but you've had some rays of sun. That's why temperatures there able to get into the 40s through the afternoon. Radar for the most part just fine. Just some sleep pellets, snow flurries that have flown around through this afternoon. Nothing of big concern for us, and that will be expected all the way through about midnight for most of us. Now, here's where the weather starts to get a little bit more active. It is across the Texas and Mexico border there. It's in response to the upper level system that is just off to the southwest. And this upper level system beginning to spread more and more moisture, plus the colder air that's with us. You get a bad combination here of both the moist air and the colder air meeting together. Not a severe situation, but a winter severe situation where we could get some sleet and freezing rain all out of this. Let's track it from the Texas and Mexico border. Watch what happens this evening down toward the hill country. Some problems here back over into central Texas. We'll come into our area into the overnight and we start to see our share of sleet and freezing rain because of the layer of warmer air just above us. Initially, it's it's all going to fall as some sleet and freezing rain and with temperatures below freezing, Travel impacts will be expected. All snow mostly going to stay off to our north and to the northwest. There's your 8 o'clock hour. There could be a lull in the activity. Certainly do expect that at times. But as we get into the afternoon, more periods of sleet and freezing rain, even more than what Futurecast has for us. And then as the atmosphere continues to cool below freezing, then we make our change over to snow. And this is the newest trend with our in-house Futurecast model. And that's why we could be looking at some accumulating snow, still some sleet and some freezing rain in deep east Texas. But if you're near and north of Highway 21, we are in line for the potential of a decent amount of snowfall. But the first thing first, we've got to get through the potential for some ice. Here's what you need to know. Starting tomorrow morning, spotty sleet to some freezing rain. Some slick spots will be expected falling temperatures into the mid 20s tomorrow afternoon and then tomorrow night, freezing rain changing over to snow and that will continue into Monday. Some of this snow, Sarah, could be very heavy snow and it's a heavy wet snow that we'll see. So definitely accumulation, but big time problems are expected here in East Texas and we want to keep a close eye on that. We also want to hear from you as well. We want to see your photos and videos when the snow starts falling. Keep your camera handy and you want to send us those pictures and videos and we definitely might use them in your coverage. It's easy to do. You can email them to weatherpix at KAT K.com or you can also go to our website and what you'll want to do is click on the photo section right there at the very top. You'll be able to share your photos there. Sarah, back over to you. Thank you very much, Marcus. And something to keep handy on days like this one is our East Texas Storm Team mobile app. You can follow our interactive radar, receive custom weather alerts for your location and watch along as our storm team tracks severe weather live on air. Now the app is free. You can download it on the Apple App Store or get it on Google Play. And later tonight, we will keep you updated with more information on severe weather and your latest news at 5 tonight. And don't forget to catch our brand new Fox 51 weekend news broadcast at 9. Have a great day.